the big count. The actual enumeration shall be made within three years after the first meeting of the Congress of the United States and within every subsequent term of 10 years in such manner as they shall by law direct. These are the words in Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution which have provided for decennial censuses of the United States since the year 1790. The reason the Constitution provided for a count of the population of the state, states was to determine on the basis of population the number of congressmen each state was entitled to have in the House of Representatives. You are participating in the 17th decennial census. Decennial, meaning every 10 years, census from the Roman censor, an official who listed the population. The first decennial census in 1790 counted a few thousand less than four million people. Separate totals were obtained for free white males 16 years old and over, free white males under 16, free white females, other free persons, and slaves. Among those enumerated in this first census was President George Washington. His Secretary of State, Thomas Jefferson, was in charge of the census, which was conducted with U.S. Marshals as field supervisors and Deputy Marshals as enumerators. Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, both later presidents, joined from the beginning in urging broader inquiries in the census. In 1810, Congress authorized inquiries on industry, and in 1840, the agriculture census was added. In 1850, every inhabitant of the nation was listed by name for the first time. Before 1900, there was no permanent census organization. For the early censuses, a special force of untrained people had to be hired, trained, used, and disbanded every 10 years. The Bureau of the Census, as we know it today, with its experienced staff of permanent census workers, is only half a century old, having been established in 1902. This 1950 census will require about 140,000 enumerators, or census takers, as they're popularly known. They will begin enumerating the nation's estimated population of 150 million persons as of April 1st. In cities, the census will take about two weeks. In the country, it will take longer. As a census enumerator, you are playing an important role in a truly big job. You are a member of a team of workers with a common goal, accurate and complete facts about ourselves and our country. On a form like this, known as a schedule, you will record facts about people, their names, ages, sex, race, marital status, and place of birth, the kinds of work they do, whether they are working or unemployed, and what kind of business or industry they're in. You will ask every fifth person you interview where he was living a year ago, where his parents were born, and the highest school grade he has attended. If he's over 14 years of age, you will find out what his income was last year and whether or not he has had military service. These are confidential facts on individuals which you cannot reveal to anyone not a sworn census employee, but when combined into totals, they can aid local government. Your own hometown may use census figures to determine the need for utilities and other public services and to estimate future requirements. From our facts on schooling, local authorities may anticipate school needs for future years. From facts on income, business firms can measure the demand for various kinds of goods and plan their production and sales programs accordingly. As a census enumerator, you will also obtain facts on housing, the types of places in which people are living, the conditions of those places, the number of rooms, the present market value, or the amount of rent paid. For every fifth place that you visit, you'll find out about such things as type of heating unit, type of refrigerator, and whether or not there is a radio or television set in the place. Information on housing is essential to the planning and carrying out of housing projects by private and public agencies. As a census enumerator in the country, you will be asking questions about farms, their number and size, and the use being made of the land the acreage and yield of grains and fruit. 
the number and kinds of livestock and poultry, and the types of machinery and equipment in use on the farm. It takes a lot of food to feed a nation of 150 million people. Information about crops and livestock and the like help the farmer and the Department of Agriculture to get more efficient production and distribution. Now, I've told you some of the things you'll be reporting on people, housing, and farms. But what happens to the completed questionnaires and schedules that you'll turn in? First, they're checked and boxed at district field offices and mailed to Census Bureau headquarters in Washington, D.C. Here, the information on the schedules and questionnaires is transferred by card punch machine operators to punch cards like this. Each hole punched in this card represents some written fact from a schedule or questionnaire. For instance, two holes in this position may mean age 26, another may mean male, and so on. By the millions, these cards are fed into sorting and tabulating machines, which mechanically read the holes in the cards and turn out the tables of statistics that appear in printed volumes as the Census Bureau's official report. After the 1940 census, more than 70 bound volumes of reports were published. For 1950, there will probably be this many and more. They will represent facts you have gathered in this census. They can be no more accurate than the answers you write on your schedule. The accuracy of census data depends on you. Now, a word from the man who is directing the 17th decennial census, Philip M. Hauser. I am glad to have this opportunity to speak to you. I wish it were possible for me to meet personally with each group of enumerators. We are about to undertake, together, the biggest census in the nation's history, and as of now, the most important one. 150 million of our fellow Americans will cooperate with us in making it a success. We, and they together, must see to it that everyone is counted in this census and that the information collected is accurate and complete. We can assure them all that the answers they give us will be held in confidence and that they will be published only as impersonal statistics. An accurate count of each state's population is important because for the next 10 years, this count will determine the number of seats for each state in the House of Representatives. An accurate count of each community's population is important for local use, for planning fire protection, school buildings, public utilities, and the like. It is also important to the local businessman as a measure of markets. Accurate replies to all the inquiries on the census questionnaires are of first importance because the thousands of uses to which census information is put by business and government must be based on sound facts. The success of this census rests on the fullest cooperation between you, the 140,000 census takers, and those of the nation's 150 million people you interview. I know that your job will involve many difficulties because I was an enumerator myself in the 1930 census. I also know that this will be an interesting and valuable experience to you, as well as an opportunity to render an important public service. The 17th decennial census is an inventory of our people, our homes, and our farms, a numbering of human assets and economic resources. This job must be done right and a great responsibility rests on every enumerator to do his or her level best. I am sure that working together as a team, we can produce the best census ever taken. <laughs>